Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. In front of me I have yet another laser engraver. You might be almost getting tired at this point about all the laser engraver reviews on this channel, but after my last video uh, I was quite blown away by the performance of the Sculptphon S6 and the Atomstock A5 Pro and uh, my kind of conclusion was that or tour really has to step up its game because the laser master 2 while it was great when it came out really could not keep up with these two machines and well in front of me i have the or tour laser master 2 pro and while on paper it is only a slight upgrade over the laser master 2 in reality as you'll soon see it does have quite a few aces up its sleeve before we move on a quick word from this video sponsor cd key deals they offer a wide variety of different CD keys for things like games, Windows licenses, Microsoft Office, or many, many more. I use quite a few Windows licenses uh, as I like to build computers for people, and I don't like to pay over 100 bucks. Partners like Dell pay a lot less, and thanks to CD key deals, you can also pay a lot less. And by using code DBD20, you can get an additional 20% off, bringing the total down to just $17.57, which is a great deal. After you've placed your order, you can simply copy the Windows activation code out of their interface, paste it into Windows under Opt-in Security, Activation, and enter your code there, click Next, and Activate, and there you go. You have now activated Windows and enjoy all the benefits of having personalization and no more watermarks. And now, back to the video. The LM2 Pro, as I'm going to call it from now on, as Laser Master 2 Pro is a bit long, uh, is getting released on June 26th, so it should be just about uh, getting released as you watch this video. And this unit was actually sent to me by MateTheBest.com and you can check them out down below. Big thanks to them for sending me this unit so I can get a review of this machine out. When you get your laser, it is of course flat packed as with all other lasers. And uh, in the box you get the laser itself, uh, some glasses, some little uh, accessories, uh, basically standard stuff. Assembling it is quite straightforward and doesn't take very long either. Now one thing that I could uh, kind of complain about is that the manual itself is not that great. The pictures are quite small and rather dark, so it's sometimes a bit difficult to see exactly what they're trying to tell you. But with some thinking and maybe some trial and error, you should be able to get it assembled, no problem. And with it assembled, let's take a look around this laser. On its core, it's very similar to all the other laser engravers and the previous or two machines. It's still using the uh, V-Slot 2020 extrusion uh, with the roller bearings and all of that. But there are some subtle differences compared to the older versions. For one, the electronics here in the front, uh, they do look quite a bit different, and they also are different internally. They are now using a 32-bit uh, board, which allows it to have much more control and uh, work a lot faster and be faster at processing. This results in higher travel speeds with the same kind of motors. Uh, you can now engrave at up to uh, 10,000 millimeters a minute, which is a lot faster than the previous 4,000 millimeters a minute and that should speed up your workflow a bit and also the turning on and off the laser is quite a bit faster. This means that if you're, you're dithering a, a large raster image you can see quite a bit of speed improvements as previously it was not the laser power that was limiting the speed at which you could engrave but more like the travel speed and accelerations and how fast you can turn on and off the laser. You can also see that there is now a beautiful drag chain here uh, along the y-axis uh, that keeps all the cables nicely organized, which I'm a huge fan of. But sadly, uh, the laser cable here on the x-axis is still just dangling around when it's actually kind of inconvenient. Uh, might not be able to do a better job of fixing it on the side, but if you're not careful, you can easily uh, have this get getting caught on the thing you're engraving. So it would be very nice if there was also a drag chain for this cable and it wouldn't be that big of a deal to add that here in the back. You can have some L brackets that support the drag chain and then that could be a lot nicer. You can also see that the motor for the x-axis moved to the side instead of being on the carriage itself. That's not a big difference and the cable for it is actually neatly routed behind it. But uh, if 
you have the drag chain here, you could still have the motor mounted here and that would work perfectly. But I guess maybe that's something for the next revision or something that you can add yourself as well. And let's say with the laser for a second, uh, they moved away from their uh, turn to adjust focus models to a fixed focus uh, laser as most of the other laser manufacturers as well, uh, which is a very nice thing to see as you can just use this simple little uh, metal cylinder, put it underneath and easily set the focus without having to uh, look at the laser spot and try to perfectly get it. Uh, it's just a lot more convenient this way. But it's not just fixed focus, it also uh, is quite a bit improved. It still is the same kind of 20 watt power consumption as on the previous or two laser, but they have gotten quite a bit of improvements. On the website they actually uh, listed as 20 watt uh, electrical power for four and a half to five and a half watts of laser power which is the correct way to describe it and it's a quite a large range of laser power but it definitely seems accurate i would almost say it's more on the high end but what also kind of matters a lot is the spot size uh, as if you can have as much power as you want if you distribute it over a larger area it still is not going to burn as much but this machine is actually really good in terms of spot size just kind of using very crude methods, I was able to uh, find that uh, this, the spot size of uh, this laser is actually about almost 50% smaller compared to the previous generation and also compared to the one of the Atom stack or the Sculpt one. What this results in is that even though it has the same amount of laser power, because it is focused more on one point, things like cutting are a lot easier. You can also get much finer lines uh, than with the other machines because well, a smaller point means that you can engrave finer details. This is especially visible on things like leather where uh, you have a very smooth surface and you can definitely see the difference uh, between the lines that this machine can engrave compared to the lines that I engrave with my Atom stack. Now you do still have the issue where it the spot is wider in one direction and that results in one axis cutting through your material faster but the difference is not quite as strong anymore which is quite nice. Before we get to the results uh, one quick word about the software uh, you can use all the standard uh, Gerbil software uh, Laser Gerbil is a great software if you don't want to spend any money and it, it'll get the job done. But for this review I actually uh, used uh, Lightburn as it does have some more features. And with the increased travel speeds uh, of this machine I was experiencing some limitations of Laser Gerbil. And since this machine is also a bit more expensive than some of the other machines I thought the $40 price tag of Lightburn is not that hard to swallow as it is only about 10% of the machine cost. So all the tests that you will see have been done with Lightburn but for the most part you can also achieve them with Laser Girl. And test results we certainly have. I did not expect a huge difference between this machine and the previous uh, Laser Master as on paper it doesn't have much, any more uh, laser power, there's a slight reduction in the spot size on paper but other manufacturers have claimed that as well and I couldn't really discern any difference. Also it has basically all the same features otherwise uh, hardware on the hardware and it does cost quite a lot more than re the regular Laser Master. It's, uh, probably about 75% more. So for that price you certainly can expect a lot more and well after giving it a try I was blown away. It does deliver a lot more. I think the main reason for that is the increased speed that the 32-bit uh, controller gives it uh, that it is able to turn the laser on and off very quickly and before uh, there was a bit of stuttering every time it turns on and off the laser. So if you have a uh, an image where it ha you use dithering to make a lot of dots to represent a grayscale image, each time it turned on and off the laser, which is maybe even multiple times per millimeter, it would hiccup slightly. So I might set the engraving speed to 3000 millimeters a minute, but in actual uh, reality it's only moving at maybe 500 millimeters a minute because due to all of the stuttering. But not with this board. Now with a lot of turning on and off there still is a slight bit of stuttering but you could see huge time savings compared to the other machines. 
these images that I engraved here, I engraved with 100% laser power, uh, but with around 5 to 7,000 millimeters a minute, and it actually delivered. Now at these speeds, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that if you want to change directions, and you are doing that at the very end of the engraving, then it already starts decelerating. You can see this very clearly in this logo, where the edges are burned a lot more than the center. And that's because they're decelerated, so it can uh, change directions and accelerate again. To not have these very ugly lines on the side, you can use a feature that's called overscan, where essentially uh, the laser moves a bit further than uh, the edge of the part and only starts decelerating after it has uh, completed the thing that it's engraving. So it turns off the laser, then decelerates, changes directions, as it accelerates again until it's over the part that it engraves and then turns the laser on again. To my knowledge, that is not something you can do in laser durable, but uh, Lightburn does have that feature and with that you can get very crisp engravings at quite high speeds. But this machine is not just good for high-speed engraving, it also cuts very impressively. 3mm plywood is no problem at all, I went around it with two passes at 400mm a minute, which is quite fast, uh, that's about the same speed as I am using with my 10W plus endurance laser, and on different materials that trend kind of continued, that I could use almost the same settings that I'm using for my 10W plus endurance laser and that machine actually has a lot more laser power output, at least in theory. I still don't have a way of testing it, but uh, from other tests that I've seen, uh, that machine has almost the 10 watts of laser output that it claims. So it's very impressive to see this machine uh, cut 3mm plywood. Also 4mm plywood uh, is no biggie at all. You can uh, either increase the passes to uh, 3 instead of 2 and stay at the same speed or you can uh, drop the speed slightly to maybe 300 millimeters a minute and go around in two passes and you get a very nice and clean cut. Now of course there is some burning around the edges because there is no air assist so that is still something that I can highly recommend. And just for why not I also tried an 8 millimeter plywood and to my surprise it actually cut through quite impressively. I was using four passes at 150 millimeters a minute, which is kind of slow, but not that slow actually. Uh, now, you, there is definitely a lot of charring, and uh, for this to look clean in any sort of way, you definitely need an air assist. Uh, but considering that the focus was not adjusted uh, all the way through at all, this is a very respectable result. And if you just need to do some uh, thicker cutting in a pinch, it will work. Moving on to acrylics, I have this 3mm uh, uh, red tinted acrylic here and I'm doing 3 passes at 150mm a minute, uh, which gives a quite nice clean result, just about the best that I've uh, seen from any diode laser. Now of course, since this is a blue light diode laser, you cannot cut clear acrylic, because the light just goes straight through it. But any sort of uh, darker tinted acrylics or opaque acrylics will work beautifully. I've already hinted at it, engraving on leather is also no problem at all, and if you're moving fast enough you can probably also cut it. I didn't do any cutting tests, but the laser power is definitely there, and the trick with cutting le leather is just to have a fairly high speed, at least like 500 millimeters a minute, and just do basically as many passes as you need. If you go any slower, then you will start to burn the leather and it will start to contract because it gets too hot and then you just have a mess. What I also tried is engraving on powder coated metal. I have this uh, piece of uh, metal here, I'm not actually sure, I think it's off of an old 3D printer or something, that is uh, powder coated in black and I engraved on it and it worked quite well. Now of course you need to go rather slow, I think it did like 150 millimeters a minute and that takes a while but you can definitely mark it and you can also bump the speed up to like 200 millimeters a minute if all you want to do is uh, label it and put some text on there which could be very interesting if you're doing like a product where you want to put some specifications on there you can easily use this kind of laser to engrave those on your powder coated parts. If you have anodized aluminum parts if the anodizing is thin enough I imagine you could probably also uh, achieve that. I don't have any parts on hand to test it, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. You just need to first do a test piece to make sure it actually does. 
And what, of course, will work very well is painted uh, metals. If you just kind of spray paint your metal and then engrave on it, that works great. I've done that with uh, even much less powerful lasers, so that should be no problem so ever. So with that, I think I've covered most of the things uh, that I have tried and that I think are important about this laser. And in conclusion, this is almost a bit of a premium laser. It definitely, the pro in the back of the name is not just an iteration, uh, meaning it's the newer one, but it is actually like a more professional machine. You can see there is like an e-stop in the front, uh, which is great safety feature that if anything goes wrong, just smack the e-stop and the machine immediately stops. And you can then just simply release it again and uh, continue whatever you were doing. There also is a kind of flame alarm, smoke alarm kind of thing. In my experience, it did not really work. Uh, well, smoke alarm would not make any sense since there is supposed to be smoke. And I tried to hold a lighter in front of it while in, uh, cutting and it did not uh, trigger any sort of safety thing. So either it's not properly working or it's only working with bigger fires or something. I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. Overall, I can highly recommend this machine. It is a bit more expensive, but what you get in return is a machine that is able to engrave very quickly. It can probably almost uh, hold itself up against some uh, cheaper uh, CO2 engraving machines. And you can also do some quite capable cutting of plywood and plexi and stuff like that. So this machine is a great starting point if you want something that is more just a toy, but actually a usable workhorse. Some things that I would definitely add, and I'll probably actually add them in a separate video, is this kind of machine needs an enclosure uh, unless you're using it outside, uh, as the smoke just gets everywhere and is uh, a health risk and a huge pain. But that's not really a gripe about this machine, but more this category of machines in general. Also, as I mentioned already, uh, that little drag chain here on the side would be a nice addition. And if you're doing more cutting than engraving, then an air assist is also definitely a really, really uh, good add-on. And it's something that you can add on very easily as well. So with that, I think we're at the end of this video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future modifications I'm going to do to this laser. And also, if you like this video, leave a like. If you have any questions, there's this comment feature down below on YouTube. It's great. I'll read all the comments and I try to respond to uh, any questions that you guys have. With that, thank you guys for watching and until next time.